In this quick tip, I'd like to go over a few things you can do to optimize the caching portion of your workflow. When you run into larger simulations with water, pyro, or anything else that's just using a lot of data, the issue is going to be not capping out on your RAM usage or your memory. So I'm going to assume that you know what RAM or memory is. I'm going to assume that you know what caching to disk is all about. This is a more intermediate to advanced discussion here. But if you don't know that and you're an absolute beginner, do check out Houdini for the new artist before checking this out. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you in this scene is how to render using the command line. It's really not that bad. All I have right here is the sparse billowy smoke preset going on. And let's say that I want to use this cache file right here, this file cache node to cache this to disk, but I want to use the command line. What I'll say is this, here is our geo cache node. And what I'll do from here is press the windows key, assuming that you're using windows and look up a install here called the command line tools. And then that's the Houdini version that I'm using. This is going to first of all, ask us where we can open up a Houdini hip file. So I'm going to save this file out. So be sure to save your file first. And then I'm going to use CD that stands for change directory. And I'm going to find this file by browsing for it on my computer. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this path, control C, and we're going to change the location right here. The next thing you want to do is say H script, and then we're going to copy the entire name of this file. So control C, control V, that will essentially open up this file in the command line tools prompt. And the great thing about this is that we're not taking up any memory on the viewports or anything else. This is just Houdini in its most bare bones form, which is really great if you have a scene that's taking up a lot of memory because of the viewport. So this is one of the first things you need to do. Once our hip file is loaded into the command shell, what we need to do is browse for that node. So we'll say this render forward slash object billowy smoke. Be sure that you spell that properly forward slash we need to then go to our geocache. So right here, we'll say geocache. And very important, we need to go inside of that node because inside of that node, we have our ROP geometry output. It needs to be a ROP node in order for this command to work. So forward slash render. And the minute I do that, it looks like nothing's happening, but if we go right here, we can see that my CPU is cranking up. If we go to our geo, we do in fact hash files being generated right here. Now this process is identical to what you would get if you clicked on the save to background option. So if you don't want to do that, you can also just say save to background and then exit out of Houdini. Both will do the same exact thing. And just to be sure that we're on the same page here, I'm talking about this button right here on the file cache node. That will again do exactly everything we just did through the command line. And again, the benefit of this is that we're not taking up any RAM with the viewports, which actually could add up to be quite a bit depending on the viewports uh, settings that you have or the number of polygons or particles that is trying to be displayed. So it's always recommended for large simulations that you either do save to disk in background or you go directly through the command line like I just showed you. Another important thing to do is on the .NET itself. We can do a few things here to optimize this even better. For one, I like taking this cache memory down to zero. Watch what happens when I do this. As I go forward in the simulation, Normally we have a little blue bar down here and those are the frames that we can scrub through for playback. That is what the cache memory is referring to. It's asking you how much space can I use on your RAM as I'm caching out the simulation before 
I run out of that little blue bar. Set that to zero if you have a large simulation. You don't want to be scrubbing through your viewport anyway, and so it's just a waste of space and uh, not recommended. Another setting that I highly recommend using is going to be the save checkpoints. If, let's say, you're trying to simulate something overnight and it's going to take a long time, you want to be sure that Windows doesn't try to update overnight and you lose everything or for whatever reason your computer crashes and you, know, you don't want to start back at frame one if that ever happens. So that's why we have checkpoints. Click this on. You'll notice that we have the ability to write out these .sim files. And I want to be clear that SIM files are not the same thing as BGO files. The reason why is because the SIM file holds everything that the solver needs to think about when it goes to do the simulation. The BGO file is a compressed, reduced version of the output of the simulation. So I'll say that again, the SIM file is way, way bigger in size than what you cache out with the BGO file because this has everything the solver needs to think about when it goes to calculate the next frame. So that is what the checkpoint file is referring to. Now, I typically check this on. I like making my own cache directory for this. So I'll do hip forward slash cache forward slash cache.os.sf.sim. You'll need to use .sf, by the way, and that is just due to how this works. <laughs> so just leave that part alone, but make your own folder there when you browse for that. Then what I like to do is go down here to the checkpoint interval, and let's say at 30 frames a second, we want every 60 frames to make this checkpoint file. So I'll go ahead and say 60 right there, or you can set that to however many frames you want before a checkpoint file is made. So as an example, we have this at 60 right now. If I go to save out some frames, watch what happens when I do that. All right, and as we can see, it made the cache folder, and there are the checkpoints. We can also see that it automatically found those checkpoints down here on our timeline because we have tiny little blue ticks where the frames have a cache file. Or I should more accurately say a SIM file. Now, if we go to, let's say, our file cache, and I was to start at frame 200, it will just find the nearest SIM file and start there, instead of frame 1. I also want to mention that on Windows, I've found that it tends to creep up on the RAM even if the geo on your scene isn't taking up that much space. So as an example, I have 128 gigs of RAM. Sometimes I'll notice for long simulations, no matter how much geometry is in my scene, it will reserve RAM all the way up to 128. And this, in my opinion, from my estimate, is due to the fact that Windows doesn't handle memory and RAM usage as well as Linux does. So not only do you get this RAM kind of creep like that, but you can also find a situation where uh, Linux simulates faster and it just uses less memory in general because it's better at managing that RAM during a simulation. So do keep that in mind. That's one major reason why many Houdini artists decide on using Linux instead of Windows, and something you should consider as well, especially if you're trying to do big simulations all the time. There's one last thing I want to mention about RAM usage and making sure that you don't cap out on that, and it's deleting anything you don't need before simulating things out. Let's say that I have this smoke, but I don't need velocity or I don't want it, because it takes up all of this space right here, we can see how much memory this geometry takes. We're at 110 megabytes right now. So we can reduce that by getting rid of stuff we don't need. Use a delete for fields right here. So you can plug that in and then just say anything that has at name equal to vel 
and be sure to not have any spaces there. There we go. That brought us down to 18 megabytes, quite a big difference. You can also turn this into VDBs. You can also resample the VDBs. When it comes to volumes, I have all kinds of tricks on how to do this on uh, Pyro 3. So do check out that course because I go into this for a whole lesson. But the point is, if you're keeping track of all the geometry that you're saving out, you're using these techniques that I'm showing you here, it's unlikely that you're going to run into a situation unless you really, really crank things up that's going to cap out your RAM, assuming that you have, let's say, 32 gigs of RAM. At 32, that should give you plenty of space if you are running things in an optimal way. If you're ever interested in one-on-one -on -one professional consultations or mentorships that are designed to help you reach your Houdini goals much more quickly, then check out CG Forge Academy. At CG Forge, you can find this service plus hours of tutorials and videos and quick tips that are all designed to be thorough, simplified, and straight to the point. Thanks for watching. I hope this is useful and have a great day.